spring of the year is one of the best times to eat kale if you like kale. We love kale. Now, I did not grow up in a family that ate kale. Granny and Pat never grew it in their gardens. I never even really knew what it was until after I was married and Miss Cindy taught me about kale. It is delicious. It's one of my favorite greens, and we grow it every spring, and I try to grow it in the fall, too. And there's lots of different ways to cook kale. One of my favorite ways is I like to I like the taste, so I don't mind just eating it as salad greens, just chopping it up and maybe mixing it with some radishes and onions and cucumbers, using it for the base of a salad. That's probably the easiest way. You can really cook kale the way you do other greens. Think of spinach, even mustard greens, things like that. Uh, mine and Jim Casta's new cookbook, uh, celebrating Southern Appalachian food. If you've not picked up your copy, I'll put a link in the description below. It has a few recipes. It does not have the recipe I'm going to share with you today, though, for kale. But it has, uh, in the book, you can find winter squash and kale. Very tasty, easy recipe. You can swap out the kale for spinach if you'd rather have that. You can also, in the, in the cookbook, find a recipe for kale and sausage soup. A very, very tasty, hearty kind of soup. There's also some recipes in the book that use spinach. One that comes to mind is creamed spinach. You can really replace the, that spinach with the kale. It'll be slightly different, but it'll still work. But the recipe I'm gonna share with you today, is not in the cookbook, but it's one that I love and I make a lot, especially in spring of the year. And especially on days like today when I've got a really busy day planned, so I'm trying to go ahead and think ahead for supper so that I have that all took care of, so when that evening rush gets here, I'm, I'm all I gotta do is serve. I don't have to have to cook anything. So I'm gonna make a, a baked ziti, I'm gonna make that. And then to go with it, I'm gonna make kale salad. Now this salad I learned how to make from one of my friends, Nanette. She taught me many years ago. It's really pretty simple and it's, a, it's really tasty. I really love it and I love the part about it. I love what I love most about it in one way, talking about those busy days, is that you can, you can kind of make the salads pretty simple and keep the dressing separate so that if you wanted to make it ahead of time and you wanted to do the first part, you know, kind of make the salad part and then keep that dressing, you've already all got it all made and then you mix it maybe the next day or late that evening if you're gonna um, be cooking, you know, early in the morning like I am trying to prepare for this afternoon. Also, a, a good tip about doing it that way is if you, you live alone, of course you can uh, decrease the ingredients in this and make it a much smaller salad because it's really, really pretty simple. But you can also kind of make it ahead and then just, uh, just dole it out as you need it. So eat it for, you know, have it a week. Maybe you're gonna eat it for a week, but you've kind of got it separated so it doesn't get soggy. But today, I'm gonna go ahead and make it just like I'm gonna eat it uh, in the next few few hours or whatever, because I am going to, I'll eat it. Me and Corey and Katie and Miss Cindy are all here today. We can eat it for our dinner and then they'll have, we'll have leftovers. It'll still be good uh, for supper as well. So I'm gonna go over the ingredients with you first though. And then I'm gonna do one step and then I'm gonna let it kind of marinate, marry as Matt would say. I'm gonna let it marry for a little while and then I'll come back and show you how easy it is to put it all together. So you need two cups of sliced almonds, one third cup freshly squeezed lemon juice. Uh, that takes, it's about two to four lemons. I've got my lemons. Corey did that part for me this morning, so I've already got that. Kosher salt, you'll need some salt. And I think it's a heaping teaspoon. We'll get to that in a minute and see if I'm right. You need a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. And I would say any of these could be to taste. If you don't like almonds, use walnuts. If you don't like much salt, don't use that much or use more if, you, if you're like me and you like salt. And the same with the olive oil. If you want to cut back on it, cut back on it or add more. Four cloves of garlic crushed with the flat side of a knife, peeled and left whole. So I've already done that. Corey peeled them and I, I just had the easy part of crushing them. 10 to 12 ounces of washed and dried kale leaves thick stems removed. You know, when kale gets bigger, if you get it when it's real little, it's, it's tender and you can eat it all. As it grows really large, sometimes that middle rib gets really tough, so you'd wanna cut that part out. Uh, and, and the weight, 10 to 12 ounces, is after you've trimmed, trimmed that piece out. And then one and a half cups of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Corey got that ready for me too. So then there's some additions that you could add it. That's, that salad is good if you just do it like that. 
but I think it really brings it up a notch if you, there's two things that Nanette suggests adding. One is chickpeas. I usually don't add chickpeas, although I like them. That would be really good. I usually don't add them. But the other is craisins, dried um, cranberries. So I do add them. And I usually add, this is like a, more than a cup, a heaping cup, I guess, of those. So I do add those. I think it just, with the the way the kale tastes and the almonds and then the sweetness of the cranberries just really, really makes it great. So then I'm going to tell you how to kind of put it together, go over that. So in a toaster oven or your skillet or whatever, I just do it in the oven, in my oven. You want to toast those slivered almonds or sliced almonds. You want to toast them. Now, those you got to be really careful with. It'll be like you're thinking, why don't they toast? Why don't they toast? And then before you know it, they will burn. So you got to be really careful with that. If you don't want to toast them, I still think it's, it's really good if you just throw them in. But the toasting them does kind of bring out their flavor, flavor more. So once you toast them, you just set them aside. And in a bowl, that's what this is the part we're going to do right now. But first I'll go over it and then come back to it. We're going to combine the lemon juice the heaping teaspoon of salt, I was right, so, and then we're going to slowly whisk in that olive oil. And then we're going to add those garlic cloves that we've crushed, and then we're just going to set that aside and let it marry, as Matt would say. And then we're going to work on our kale. So we're going to, this is Nanette's directions, work in batches, cut the kale into thin ribbons, gather a large handful of leaves, bunch together tightly, and use the other hand to slice into one fourth inch thick pieces. But then she says, this need not be done very precisely or neatly. The ideal is to end up with a kind of slaw. So you just want to cut them into pieces, basically, is what you're doing with the kale. Uh, and then she says, notes, like I explained, this recipe can be made up to this point one day ahead, keeping the kale and the dressing separate from each other. And then we're going to place it, uh, place the kale in a bowl and uh, sprinkle surface with the almonds and the cranberries if I'm going to use them uh, and the cheese if you're going to use it. You don't have to use the cheese but if you want to. And then we're going to remove those garlic cloves and then we're going to dress the salad, toss it around. So I'm going to go do that first part of, uh, Corey's helped me out so much. She's got a lot of my first parts done but I definitely got the kale. I need to chop it though um, and we've got all the other ingredients. So, it, But in our, I've got me a bowl here and I'm going to pour my my lemon juice in there that Corey got out for me. I'm going to get my salt. I've got my salt. I'm not using kosher salt. I'm using, um, what am I using? The red salt? Sea salt? It's not sea salt. What is it? Mm, I knew Himalayan pink salt. That's what I love, but I'm like, what is, what is that word? It just wouldn't come to my brain. So, But you use what salt you want. Even regular table salt, I'm sure, would be fine. And then we're going to slowly whisk in our, our olive oil. Get it all in there. Then we're going to throw in our that garlic that we that I crushed. Woo! Made a big splash with that one. I didn't need to throw it in that hard. It smells so good already with the lemon juice and the and the garlic. Mm. I'm going to give it another quick little stir. And then I'm going to set that aside and let it marry. And then I'm going to get started on cutting up the kale. Okay. And so when it comes to um, chopping up the kale, just like Nanette said, I mean, you could even just leave it like this. It'd just be big pieces to actually eat. Corey, once she cut the uh, middles out of it, you know, it's not as easy as folding a big one in half and making slaw, but I just aim for little pieces. And you kind of, that's, you know, the size that you would want will be just fine. I did, just to be curious, and so that if anybody wanted to know, I measured uh, the kale that I was using, and this is about 24 cups. Now that's not packed tightly, that's just um, loosely packed. I used my big two-quart measuring cup to 
to measure in it, and I did that three times, so about 24 cups of kale. 10 to 12 ounces, though, um, after those ribs have been removed. And if you wanted to turn it around and give it another rough chop, you could do that, too. Okay, that was the last of it. Now we're ready to dress the salad. Okay, now that we've got it all chopped up, we're just going to start putting the, the ingredients that we're using on it. So I was here's where I toasted my almonds. We're going to add them. Add the cheese that Corey grated for me. This is a really big bowl, but I even wonder if I might need an even bigger one. You need a big bowl if you're making the whole recipe. And I'm going to put my craisins. And then I'm going to try to mix that up some without, without spilling it. That'll be the, the miracle if I can do that. It's a really pretty salad, too, with the green, the lush greenness of the kale. And then the little, if you use the craisins, and you could use raisins too, or any other kind of dried fruit you wanted. I like uh, dates in salads too. You could chop up dates and put them in there. But it's pretty with the green against the other colors of the red and the brown of the almonds. that mixed up some. We're going to take out our garlic out of our dressing. So we can fish it out. You could, I'm sure you could, I never do, but I'm sure you could make this ahead of time and let it sit overnight and really just more intensely get that garlic flavor. And you could mince up the garlic and just leave it in there if you wanted to do that. When I get ready to make my baked ziti, I'll add that garlic to it. So now you can start out just kind of adding a little bit at a time till it gets to kind of toss and add and till it gets to where you think it should be. There's another piece of garlic. Maybe a few more pieces that I've left. on the oil or something's really bringing that smell alive and then also the garlic so I can see some dressing on it but I think I'm gonna probably pretty much add the rest of it save a little bit So this salad goes really well with a, a meal, like thinking about what I'm going to do with it today for supper. But it also, like Corey and Katie and Miss Cindy and I will eat some of it for our dinner today. And it goes well with like just some crackers, if you've got some little crackers to eat with it. Of course, you don't need crackers. It's got the almonds if you didn't want them, but, but I like crackers. So. rest of it. Mm. 
Okay, I think that's I think that's good. I'm gonna see if I can con Corey into coming over here and tasting it with me. Of course, she's tasted it before. We both both of us have. Let's see if I can get us a little bowl and a fork. She's doing some work for me over at the table. But Corey, you want to come taste? I'll get us both a little. And you're tasting anything that you make. Oh, you're not. Nice. This is really great salad and one that's nice that you can kind of make ahead of time, uh, especially if you want to keep them separate, like I was saying, and and not dress it to the end. But you know, even with it dressed, I mean, we have eat it literally a day later, haven't we? Oh, Two days sure. later, and we still like it. Yeah. We still enjoy we it. Days later. it. As it kind of marinates in the uh, refrigerator, if you do like we do and kind of eat on it for several days, even though it's mixed up together, the sweetness of those cranberries kind of marry into the greens and the greens soften, the kale does. Everyone's going to think I don't like it because I was making a face. It's sour. Mm -hmm. But that makes it good, too. Yeah, that lemon jar, uh, lemon juice that makes it a tart tart salad. But that's why I like adding those little uh, cranberries because they add a sweetness. you got kind of got the tart and the sweet. That's and the good. almonds are kind of sweet, too. Yeah. It's good. I haven't had this in a long time. Mm -hmm. I don't guess I've made it since last year. And the cheese is really good in mm -hmm. it. And it, um, again, once it sits in the refrigerator, if you like us and like it like that, but it's really good like this, really kind of tart and sweet at the same time. Almonds are really good in it. Mm -hmm. Crunchy. I was hungry, too. Mm -hmm. Again, a very versatile recipe. So if you wanted to back up on the olive oil, back up on the salt, maybe don't use the salt at all until you get it done and then salt it. Add some pepper. I mean, the sky's kind of the limit. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad Nanette told me, taught me how to make it though, many years ago now. But if you have a ton of kale growing in your garden, this is a good thing to do with it. Mm-hmm. Mm, really good. So we hope you enjoyed seeing how to make, I guess I'll call it Nanette's kale salad. Really tasty uh, and really, as you can see, pretty simple to kind of change it up to how you, how you want it. The chickpeas in it would be good too. If you put chickpeas in it, it'd almost be like a, um, I mean, you know, you could even throw some chicken in it and then you'd have a meal. It'd be like a whole meal. You'd like oh, yeah. that, wouldn't mm -hmm. you? With the chicken, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we hope you enjoyed uh, seeing how to make that. As always, we hope that you'll continue to drop back by and help us celebrate Appalachia. I thought about doing this. I have a shirt on there. But everybody be like, where's my shirt? And I gotta get some shirts. I meant to say too what happened to my arm and I forgot. Ain't nobody business. Well, I know, but I don't want people to I know that. but you say I got burnt. Well, I did. I got burned cooking. I get burned cooking a lot. I probably got right there, a scar from burn. Those are the tender places and when you're getting stuff in and out of the oven. Oh yeah. This one I actually got the stuff out of the oven and then burned myself on the pan. Yeah. Anyway. Well, Rick and Granny's excited about the trees. Yeah. She will be. Did your printer still work? Yeah, it was. Because I was mm -hmm. thinking it might be funny in me and Katie's videos to print out. Like, I do remember the cursive things with the lines and you had to... Had to try to do your T's or your M's or whatever. I mean, I had the before I could sign my new name. I didn't know how to write a G. Mm -hmm. And one thing I thought, I mean, I want something short but kind of to the punch. And one thing... You know, we can't read cursive. But then I was like, what if I just call it, we can't read? And then have 
I can go into Canva right now and see if they have little cursive things and put cursive on the screen. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, right. I so think I'm that's just, smart. That would grab people's attention. Yeah. But it's true that we can't read. Yeah. But if I have cursive stuff on the thumbnail. I was thinking about y'all about this this yeah. morning early when I was doing a cookbook order for someone that just mailed me a check and they wrote me a really, really nice letter, but it was all in cursive and they had beautiful penmanship. When I wrote, I, I just, and now it's been so many years since I wrote, write often, I can't, I just print, I can't write hardly. I mean, I sign my name in cursive, but I never, even when I had to like turn in book reports and stuff like that, my cursive was never, I just never had pretty penmanship. Now, Granny did, hers is real pretty. Anyway, but I was reading that thinking about how beautiful their penmanship was and then I thought, and Corey and Katie couldn't even read this and I was just like reading it real fast because I, because that's what I learned. So, you know, I didn't have any, it wasn't no place where I had to stop and say, I wonder what they're saying. Right, I could, sometimes I can read cursive but like I have to spot read because I'll hit a word that I just absolutely don't know but then if I read on because of the context of the sentence then I can figure it out. Mm -hmm. And there's some of it that I can read. Like I know what some letters look like but then there's some I just don't know. Mm -hmm. It just looks like scribbles to me and I can't tell what it says. Yeah. Sometimes, like I said, though, mostly it's just I will look at the context. And then I think some of why we don't people do cursive as much is we have computers. Everybody types everything. Yeah. I can type way faster than I can write. And I didn't used to be like that because, I mean, we grew up, yeah, there were pictures when we were kids, but we still primarily grew oh, yeah. up writing. So obviously that's doubly true for you. That's why I never did have very nice handwriting, but now it's... Mine's terrible. Because I type all the time, yeah. Yeah. So on Canva there is some like little cursive thing. So I was thinking we'd have a picture of us like making like a face or something and then just have, just have the title of the video simply be, We Can't Read. That's nice. And that's it. Yeah. You no, know, I know dash cursive, no nothing, just We Can't mm -hmm. Read. Then on the thumbnail, like I said, there'll be a picture of us doing something like that. And then I'll have some of these cursive letters. Okay, and that would be great. Put on. Is Miss Cindy asleep? No. You want some salad, Miss Cindy? Sure. Okay. I can see your eyeballs. And I'm using your eggs. You think that's too dramatic, though? That'd be too much. I uh, know. I don't think so. I think it's kind of cute. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, it's just what you have to do. You have to try to be competitive and grab people's attention. You know. Or Miss Cindy, I don't know if said it. This one, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I said you ain't even got to play the set. This dump of a house. <laughs> 